Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Remember, if you haven't already, um, make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel if you're watching us. And if you're listening to us on your podcast provider, make sure you hit follow. Um, every Wednesday, 6am, we have an amazing guest coming your way. And our aim is to add value to your leadership journey and um, by bringing amazing guests with amazing stories and experts in their field. So today, I've got the honour of speaking to Holly. How are you doing, Holly? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Stuart. That's fine. I'm really excited about this. And, and do you know what? I've said this a couple of times that we've had some great conversations in the last couple of months and to get this into 20 minutes is going to be a challenge. So I really enjoy this. Um, so Holly, I'm going to get you to introduce yourself in a second, but this is really interesting that we've we've started the month of March with an inspirational female in football and you obviously fit into that category as well so we sort of the start and end of March you've got a very similar topic going on there so um on that I'm gonna hit the 20 minute timer and Holly if you could introduce yourself for the people who don't know who you are tell us a little bit about what you've done and then um, what you're now doing okay so my name is Holly Morgan and I I think how we met Stuart is me coming to you to kind of talk about my new venture of becoming a FA intermediary. Um, I've started my own agency called Morgan Sport Management. Um, so that's where I am now. But to give a little bit of information before that, I have been involved in the footballing world for a very, very long time, over half of my life. So at 11 years old, I started playing for Leicester City Women's Football Club. And through a 17 year period, I have been a player, a captain and a first team coach within that club, whilst kind of experiencing and going through so many um things along that journey which has been good it has been bad but it's all been I guess worth it because I'm now in a position where I am very happy in what I'm now going on to do um so yes played for Leicester City Women's Football Club um captain like I said and very proud to have helped the club go from an amateur to a semi-professional to a professional outfit um, and very proud that as an individual and as a family member, we were able to help the club rise from kind of the lower levels of women's football to the very, very top, where now Leicester is playing in the Women's FA Super League. So yeah, very, very proud moment for me that that has been able to happen. Yeah. And, and again, just from that, um, you can tell how that completely links to us talking about leadership because especially getting into the captaincy and we chatted when we first met didn't we about the the time scale that you've seen from the age of 11 to where you are now that whole transformation of the the women's game and how amazing that has been from a amateur to professional um, entity so um before we forget i'm going to start on the um couple of questions so we're obviously hashtag leadership what's what's on your mind what comes to your mind when you just hear the word leadership? Instantly, I always think how leadership, it's so many different styles. I think it's specific to the individual, um, how you lead, what kind of approach you take, what kind of style. It's, it's all down to the individual. So when I think of leadership, I don't think of one, you know, main thing or one set thing. It's not rigid. It's very fluid because it's based on the individual as as to how they want to lead and what they think is most effective. So for me, when I think of leadership, I just think of my experiences of people who I've looked up to as leaders, but also experiences of people who I've thought, hmm, if I'm, if I'm ever in a position to lead, I don't think I'd want to lead like that. So again, for me, I think it's just about the style and approach that the individual takes. But I think it's it's a very important role and the responsibility that it has on you is huge. And I know through personal experiences that it took a lot out of me in being a leader. It's what's the saying? It's very lonely at the top, isn't it? So like, I know when I was captain, I think the view is being captain, everything's okay. You know, you're happy, you're comfortable, you're, you don't need any help, but actually it's a very lonely place because you still need the support. You still want the support. But I don't think when you're a leader, people think of you like that. Yeah, amazing. I love that. And, and staying with you, because you have been at lots of different levels of this and um, at the sharp end as well, at the top. Um, where do you think your leadership journey started, whether it's on reflection now that you're here or whether there was a light bulb moment at the time that you were like, right, this is where my leadership starts. Where, where, how far are we going back? 
Honestly, I can remember I was playing for Leicester and it was, I think it was the under 14s age group. And we had like a, um, like an assessment sheet of what we wanted for the season, our aims and aspirations. And on that sheet, I said, um, I want to be captain. And I said, I want to be captain because I believe like I've just got the desired attributes for it. I think I look out for people. I listen, I can communicate and I genuinely just want to help those around me. So I think that was a light bulb moment for me because I put myself forward to, to be captain. Like I, I was the one that suggested it. It wasn't somebody telling me, oh, Holly, I think you'll be a good captain. I kind of saw it in myself that actually, I think I can do this. I think I can be a leader in how I am. Um, and also where, where was, do you think that came from then where, where do you think that desire or that because first you just said then that almost the awareness that you had the skill set required mm, like where do you think that skill set started to come from I think through my experiences of playing football at a young age I was one of very 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 few black women playing so in terms of representation I always felt quite uh, not on the outside, but it wasn't, it wasn't always a comfortable environment to be in, but I think it, it comes from me not conforming or me being strong in who I am, um, and remaining true to myself. I think that's what led me to think, actually, you know, I want to be a leader because I've kind of gone through many barriers and hurdles, but I've never changed myself for, you know, things that are right in front of me. I've always kind of done things the way I think is right and true and I think that's what's that's what led me in that moment to think oh well, actually I think I should could be captain I think I would be a good um candidate for it so I think it's through those challenges that I had um as a youngster um having to experience certain things uncomfortable things where I didn't change who I was I thought I think that's quite a positive thing yeah amazing so the one question we've added recently is about you picking out somebody that had an influence on your leadership journey yeah. um uh, and we've had some really interesting because you already mentioned that about i can imagine the amount of people you've had exposure to in your in your journey because of the nature of sport <coughs> um, but who would you pick out Honestly, I never really struggle to answer this question because it's it's always at the forefront of my mind. So my family are very supportive and I've always looked at my mum, dad, brother and sister. So I'm the youngest of the three siblings. I've always looked to them as um, kind of like inspirational figures in my life and who are leaders in their own way. So I've been very fortunate to have that in a very close knit family. But when it came to also um outside of that Venus and Serena Williams they were always two figures in my head from especially like when they were young that I thought they were leaders in their own way uh very very young when they came onto the stage um but they were they were unapologetically black they didn't change who they were based on what was happening around them yeah. they wore their hair how they wanted to wear their hair they had confidence in themselves. They weren't arrogant. They were just confident in their own ability because they put so much work into what they were doing and had belief in themselves that I always looked at Venus and Serena as two leaders who I would want to kind of follow in the footsteps of, of not conforming, always remaining true to yourself and leading by example. And I think that's so important. And it's the example that you give that is critical to people seeing you as a leader and wanting to follow you yeah. so for me my family and Venus and Serena Williams were very very much big influences for me but also I've had experiences of watching people where I kind of think hmm I I don't think that's a good characteristic char characteristic trait to have in a leader I know that I won't want to be like that when I become a leader so it's kind of been uh, interesting to see it from that kind of way as well and yeah. you kind of helped me to think of it like that which was quite um enlightening to think of in a way yeah and, and could, you know I'm glad you mentioned uh, I, I thought you would probably mention your family and I'm going to say why because when you were saying about how you um your light bulb moments of leadership and I, that's why I asked the question like where do you think that came from and I and I thought it was and, and quite a few people say that they've almost turned up with the the attributes for leader, but it's actually subconscious or conscious at the time that it's the environment in which you grow up. 
and the, the people that you are surrounded by, even the language that's spoken um, as in positive, um, nurturing characteristics towards confidence and, and stepping up and putting yourself forward. So um, amazing. So I want to dig into this fact of you becoming the captain mm -hmm. of Leicester City, because that, that is a, a pinnacle point, isn't it? Um, I know you've mentioned about putting yourself um, forward for that at quite an early age. So you obviously have the, the drive, determination, confidence to do so. But what have you learned in your leadership journey over having that position? Because we talk about people management all the time, people leadership, mm. and the fact that everybody is different. What are the sort of things that you had to deal with and what you learned in that time of being in those positions? It's incredibly hard. I think most people think of a captain as, oh, that's the best, you know, <coughs> To having the team that means you're going to be starting every week it means that you are you know one of the favorite players it means that you are in a most advantageous position to kind of benefit from but honestly I think it was one of the hardest things I've had to go through because for me I think people management is the hardest part because in a team yes you know you want to be a close-knit team but at the end of the day everybody wants to play everybody wants to be in starting 11 so you have to then deal with the people who aren't and I found that incredibly difficult because many of times I haven't been happy with you know the culture and the changing room so if somebody wasn't starting they weren't being a supporter they were actually bringing people down and their emotions and their feelings towards somebody playing in their position you could feel it and I hated that I, I never and I went through it I went through it. So I've, I've experienced being in a changing room where people would question why I was starting. People would look at me thinking, oh, why is she playing when so-and-so is on the bench? She should be playing instead of Holly. So I, I know how it feels to be made to, to, be, to, be made to feel small um, and disrespected. So I think the big part for me was people management of if something was happening that I disagreed with, it was calling it out and being very open to that person and very direct. One thing that I think most people can always say about me is that if somebody came to me to moan about a problem, the first thing I would say is, well, go to that person. There's no point you talking to me or your friends in a corner. They're not going to solve the problem. The only way you can solve it is by dealing with the person that you have the issue with. So for me being captain, it was trying to, it was trying to motivate people and encourage people to be at their best. And again, that was pressurizing because I felt like as a captain, I had to perform week in, week out. And if I didn't perform, I felt like I was, I felt quite embarrassed. More, I think I felt more embarrassed than maybe what another player might have felt because I think people look up to you as the one who should always be a 10 out of 10. Um, so for me, it was an incredibly difficult journey and one that took a lot out of me because you, you have to, I always say to people in being a captain, you have to, take yourself out of the picture you have to be away from it and above it all you can't see yourself as an individual I never really looked at myself as a player I looked at myself as being there for everybody else because mm. at the end of the day for the team to be successful I felt like I had to ensure that people were feeling good confident if they were upset I would help them with their issues so that then they go on the pitch and that they're able to play and deliver because at the end of the day that's what we needed we need people to be able to help us win games so it was it was it was probably putting all of my problems to one side and taking on everybody else's problems mm -hmm. and when I look back I think would I have been different and sometimes I think I would have would I have taken on so many issues problems um, like they were my own, maybe not because it took a lot out of me, but then I don't think I could because that's who I am as a person. Yeah. And I think through my experiences, I, I know what it feels like to be disrespected. And I know what it feels like to be within a team where you don't enjoy being in that team. And I never, ever wanted anybody who ever played for Leicester when I was involved to ever feel like that. Yeah. And it's, you know, I'm smiling here because I, I kind of, I know a lot more of detail because we're, we're obviously going to be doing some work together yeah. <clears throat> about what you're now doing. And mm -hmm. that, that seems a perfect transition because of all the things you just said then, you've experienced it, you, you've been there, you've dealt with it, you've got the experience to, to become that kind of coach, mentor. They, so, so it's a perfect transition. Tell us a little bit about what you're now doing um, on this being released 
we are literally launching aren't we so tell us a little bit about what you're doing now yeah so I'm incredibly excited to be like in a position now to be launching Morgan Sport Management so it's a sports agency that I founded and it's really there to help athletes on and off the field I think sometimes and I'm not generalizing and and I'm not saying this is everyone but I think individuals can be treated like commodities whereby you know you can pick up your paycheck through their contract you know but actually there's so much more support that is needed um to be given to these individuals and so for me I've had my experiences I've had it as a player captain a coach I know I know how it feels I know what people go through that I now want to be able to support people in a way that I might not have been supported in that environment now not to say that I haven't been supported by my family or close close friends but sometimes when you're in an environment like in a bubble where you're with the same people every day sometimes you need somebody outside of that to be able to give you a different outlook or perspective on what you're thinking or feeling to help you out. And I kind of just want to be that support system for those players or individuals or athletes in whatever sport it is. It's not specific to football. It could be, you know, in whatever industry. So for me, Morgan Sport Management, it's, it's, it's player centric. It's helping and supporting them, but it's making sure that they remain true to themselves because that's what I found to be, um successful for me I'm happy that I didn't conform and change and behave in a way that wasn't me and I kind of want to allow others on their journey to be confident in themselves to stick to who they are and to be on a journey with them helping them to be successful in whatever way that looks like because success to you could be different to what success to me looks like it's all down to that individual and what they want and what they see as success yeah, amazing. And I want to dig into like I'll just share quickly about some of the things we're going to be doing and um, linking through Star Development. And we've talked about the Athlete Hub for several years and, and you reaching out and talking to us is, is fantastic because it's bringing that to life. And um, obviously we're going to be creating a, a coaching hub for athletes and specifically linking with your um, people to start off with, your athletes about having that external and you talked about that bubble didn't you and, and I talk about the military bubble sometimes um, about how important it is to get somebody else's um, just listen their ear they talk about this that listen um, and when we're talking through high performance cultures behaviors mindset and stuff so but what do you think that's going to add to your um, agency your athletes um, I know we've talked about Lowe's haven't we but um, what, what, what do you think I think for me as an agency, I've got like four categories that I really want to stress to people that I'm focused on in delivering. And that's nutrition, uh, technical and physical performance, mental well-being and recovery. And for me, I think they are areas that, you know, all across the board and whatever sport you are in is important. And I don't think the support is there. So this Athlete Hub, for example, is a great way for individuals to be around like-minded people in different sporting environments which I think is great because it's gaining a different outlook and perspective on how one person deals with a matter even though it could be in a different sport it's a all these individuals are competitive competitive individuals athletes who are experiencing the same things so I think being able to come outside of that bubble and interact with other people and gaining knowledge but different experiences can help them in their own journey. So I think for me, the mental well-being side of allowing the player space away from the bubble that they're in that can be so consuming. And again, from my own experience, sometimes it's so hard to get out of that bubble when you're in it and you know you need to get out, but it's, it's incredibly difficult to do that when all the people that you kind of know are within it. Mm-hmm. Or for example, you are working with people five, six, seven days a week so I think the athlete hub is it's important for these individuals to feel like they can kind of let off steam but to different people in a different way that could help them in their own environment yeah and I'm just going to give a little bit of context there for the listeners so we've got people from table tennis athletics and um, football um, elite running like endurance running at levels of development squads gb development squads semi-pro professional all the way up to olympic level so to put those people together yeah they've got a lot of similarities and a lot of like what you've exactly just said and and the reason i sort of give that context is 
that happens in business as well. Like we're speaking to people that yeah. love the change of language and love the change of storytelling. And it's different, isn't it? Um, yes. And I can't wait for it. This has been envisioned in my head for quite a while. And we've dipped in and done a little bit. But obviously linking with your, you guys is phenomenal because it's bringing that to life a little bit more now. So I can't wait to share that. And, and we're going to be putting a lot of stuff out there for people to see. <laughs> um, so that is the end of the podcast. Uh, if you were to give our listeners one little bit of advice um, to level up their leadership journey, like, what would you say to people to start doing to step in a, a different direction or a, um, a developmental direction of doing something, maybe something a bit different? I think it's just not looking at other leaders out there thinking that there's just one way or one approach to it. And I think as an individual, I think it's also very important to kind of be in charge of your own, you know, your own pathway so that what your style and what your approach is, it might be different, but if you're confident, happy and comfortable with that, then follow through with it. And I think being a leader, sometimes you might not even know that you are one, but you are actually, you know, doing things or showing attributes of a leader, but it's just making sure that you don't box yourself in to this idea of what a leader actually looks like, because they're completely different from, you know, from one leader to the next, there's no right way of leading. And I think it's just saying to people, if you are passionate about something and you're committed and you're dedicated and you think that you can help people, and you are probably helping people now without knowing it, you are a leader, you're leading in a certain way. So just have confidence in what you're doing and not always looking at what other people are doing and thinking that that is the right way. And that if you're not like that, then that means you're not a leader. No way at all. Does that mean it? Awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. I've been really looking forward to doing this one because we, we had some great conversations. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, Holly. Um, guys, if you've enjoyed that, make sure you um, follow us every um, Wednesday next month as well. As every month, we bring fantastic guests your way to make you stop and think about your leadership journey. And hopefully we're adding value. And please reach out and let us know. It came from a, a listener and the extra question that we are now asked about the influencer on your leadership journey. So it's really good and powerful to hear your feedback feedback so make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel make sure you follow us on your podcast provider and it'd be great if you could pass any episodes forward that you have found really useful um so holly thank you so much thank you for having me thoroughly enjoyed it yeah we're going to be sharing all your stuff so make sure you go and check out holly's website make sure you link on linkedin and um there'll be loads of stuff coming out and I'm looking forward to our stuff as well because we're going to be sharing some of the things we're working together on um in the very near future right See you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.